Okay, so today what I'm going to teach is I'm going to teach a little cheat method for stoichiometry. And what I mean by that is something I refer to or call the flux capacitor of stoichiometry. Now, let me tell you where this comes from. So, one of my favorite movies is a movie called Back to the Future, right? Back to the Future, there is something that makes time travel possible. And if you've seen the movie, you would know that thing is called the flux capacitor, right? So, you know, me, I'm always trying to bring whatever I can into the classroom, and I came up with this thing called the flux capacitor of stoichiometry. Now, I will tell you guys that... This will never show up in one of your college classrooms ever. It will never show up anywhere other than Mr. Kirby's life. So the fact of the matter is if you ever refer to this out with your friends or with anybody who hasn't been a Manchester student, they will look at you like you're crazy. But the cool thing about the flux capacitor of stoichiometry is it'll give you a roadmap for doing calculations so that you won't skip steps. So I always start with the middle, all right? And in the middle, what we're going to put is we're going to put moles right here. And we refer to that term moles, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of a particle. So on one end of it, what we're going to do is we're going to put particles over here. Now, it does not matter where you put these things. This is just where I put them. Okay? So we're going to put particles. And then likewise, over here, we're going to put liters of gas. And then likewise, down here, we're going to put mass. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like flux capacity yet, does it? But here's what we're going to do. So in order to go from moles to particles, what you do is you would multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Likewise, to go from particles to moles in this direction, you would do the opposite, which is to divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So, depending on which way you want to go, you follow the arrow. Here, to go from moles to liters of gas, you multiply by 22.4. Why? Because that's a standard, okay? That's a constant, that there are 22.4 liters of a gas in a mole of a gas. Okay, likewise, the opposite is also true. If we want to go from liters of gas, so I give this to you in liters and ask how many moles it is, you would divide by 22.4 liters. And then, one more branch. To go from moles to mass, what we do is we multiply by something called the molar mass, which is what we've been calculating and talking about in previous lessons. So we multiply by the molar mass, and then likewise, to go from mass to moles, we divide by the molar mass. And now you can see how this takes on the look of the flux capacitor in the Back to the Future movies. So we end up with the flux capacitor of stoichiometry. All right, so we just did the flux capacitor of stoichiometry. And now we're going to go ahead and do some problems that apply it. So number one says that we calculate how many grams are in 1.175 times 10 to the 26 molecules of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide? So, first of all, we have molecules, right? We know that there's you know, 1.175 times 10 to the 26 molecules. And what it's asking us for is for grams, right? Well, that's not liters of gas, that's not moles, it's mass. So when we're looking for grams, it's always going to be mass. So we can't go directly from molecules to mass. That's kind of what this whole flux capacitor is all about, is making sure you realize and remember that you have to go molecules to moles, moles to mass. So what we do is we start with what we have, and we have 1.175 times 10 to the 26th molecules, right? And the first thing we're going to do with that is we're going to say, okay, we have 1.175 times 10 to the 26 molecules of H2O2. Well, in order to go from molecules to moles, we divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So, divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, when we do that, we're going to get a, a number, okay? Um, that number is going to be equal to 
Okay, so I did this in the, my calculator. When you do this, you want to make sure you put this number in parentheses divided by this number in parentheses. When I did that, I have four significant figures here to start. So I'm going to maintain four significant figures all throughout the problem. And my suggestion to you is this. Whatever we start with, we finish with at the end. So four significant figures is a 1.175. It's just what's in front of the times 10 to part, right? So when I did that, I get 195.18, right? But with four standard figures, that becomes 195.2. What is that? Well, now we've gone from molecules to moles. So what do we have? We have 195.2 moles of H2O2. Now, to get from moles to mass, we multiply by the molar mass. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take 195.2, and we're going to multiply by the molar mass of H2O2. Now, how do we get that? Well, okay, we have two hydrogens, and they're both 1.01 grams, right? Plus, and I'm going to have to make another parentheses in here, plus two oxygens, right? So those are 15.9994. When we round to the hundredth place on that, we get 16.00. So when we have this, we multiply 195.2 times there and four seven figures in our answer. So when we go to do this, we get 6,640 point, I'm gonna give it with a few extra decimals, 1162797. Well, we just said that we're gonna set up four seven figures in our answer. So one, two, three, four. We look at how the 1 would impact that, right? Well, point 0.1, it's not greater than 5, therefore it round down. So the answer becomes 6640. Now here's our complication, right? Here's the problem, is that I have to put a decimal in order for there to be four significant figures, right? And then I can't forget the label of grams. And the final answer is 6,640 grams. That's the final okay, one. let's do number two now, same page. So, uh, again, we're on the mole calculations using flux capacitor stoichiometry. So the next one says, uh, convert 2.50 kilomoles of potassium chlorate to grams. So the first thing I would know is what potassium chlorate is, right? So potassium is K, chlorate is ClO3, plus 1, minus 1, I've written it appropriately as KClO3. That's the first thing. Uh, now, when we look at our little chart here, right, I, I've given it in kilomoles, and I, they want me to take it out to grams, which is mass, right? But this isn't, you know, kilomoles here, it's just moles. So the first thing I said to myself was, okay, I'm going to take 2.50, you know, kilomoles, and I'm going to turn that into moles. Well, I know that by taking, or kilo means a thousand, right? So what that becomes is 2,500 moles. Now, if I needed to do the dimensional analysis on that, right, what I could do is I could say 2.50 kilo moles, and I could set that as one kilo mole always has, like I just said, a thousand regular moles in it, and 2.50 times a thousand gives you 2,500. So that's kind of how what I, the process I'm doing in my head is showing this dimensional analysis. So from there, then what we had to do was we say, okay, now we have 2,500 moles, and we had three cent figures to start, so we want to finish with three cent figures. Let's not forget that. We'll get there eventually. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from moles to mass. When we multiply by the molar mass, well, the molar mass of KClO3 when you do it is 122.55. Now, I'm not making that number up. That, that comes from, you know, potassium plus chlorine plus three oxygens. And when you do that, you get 122.55. So what we do is we take 2,500 moles and we multiply by the molar mass, right? Because in order to go in this direction from moles to mass, we multiply by the molar mass. So we take 2,500 and we multiply by 122.55. Now, again, that gives me three significant figures in the answer. So, I end up with the answer of equals 306,000, and it's a label of grams, 
And I actually write label what it is grams of. It's grams of potassium chlorate. Now, significant figures, right? The reason it's 300, 306,000 is because there's no decimal here, right? So that is not a significant figure, not a significant figure, not a significant figure. These three are significant figures. That zero is because it's a sandwich zero. So therefore, this number does indeed have three significant figures to match the three significant figures that are right here, and therefore, our answer is acceptable.